ডক্টর এ কে সরকার আমাদের পিএলএস হসপিটালের ক্লিনিক্যাল ডিরেক্টর আইটিউর উনি আমার পিআইসিউ এবং আইটিউ একসময় একসাথে ছিল আমরা এখন আলাদা জায়গায় চলে গেলেও ওনার নলেজ ওনার ইনপুট ইজ অলওয়েজ ভেরি ইম্পর্ট্যান্ট ফর আওয়ার পেশেন্টস সো বাই ডিফল্ট সামটাইমস হি বিকামস আ পিডিয়াট্রিক অ্যাজমা স্পেশালিস্ট অ্যান্ড সেই জন্য পিডিয়াট্রিক আইটিউ কেয়ারও ওনাকে মাঝে মাঝে দেখতে সামলাতে হয় তো ইটস এ গ্রেট প্লেজার টু ইন্ট্রোডিউস হিম অ্যান্ড হি নট অনলি হেডস দ্য আইটিউ বাট হি উই টেক প্লেজার ইন ডায়াগনোসিং রেয়ার অ্যান্ড ডিফিকাল্ট কেসেস আর অজয় দা বাকিটা বলবেন থ্যাংক ইউ সঞ্জুক্তা জাস্ট আই go the first slide there had been a lot of problem you know about the definition of asthma so it's not very easy all whoizers are not asthmatics similarly all patients who are coming with breathlessness may not have asthma so they might have a very common symptoms with different diseases jarjono and the we can make a definite diagnosis in presence of one uh, lab test or one biomarker unfortunately in asthma there is no lab test we are doing pyclometer we are doing spirometry but there are lots of fallacies with that so they might help you or, uh, <coughs> or support your diagnosis similarly the airway hyper responsiveness asthma main pathogenesis but we can have one diagnosis called airway hyper responsive syndrome which is not asthma you can have a patient having lot of cough i had i could remember a patient he couldn't come out of you know his own room and that has been like a, a glass box room and he was so hyper responsive that was in england so we had to control that patient with lignocaine nebulization to make that airway is anesthetic sort of thing so this is one thing but he is not asthmatic so asthma and the definition you will find that chronic inflammatory disorder of the airway asthma is considered as but what is happening in copd same then the people have given another name called echo asthma copd overlap so it's a overlapping i would say that uh, but most important that we haven't been able to explain why asthma is having waxing and waning of symptoms in copd it's gradually deteriorating in other disorders bronchitis is with spasm it's gradually deteriorating but asthma is the only disease there is waxing and waning of the symptoms and we do not have any definite explanation for that that's why we have two major organizations been able to give a uh, sensible definition one is by NEEPP is a national asthma education and prevention program they the basically they have said the same thing the NEEPP said a common chronic disorder of the airways it's also chronic it's not acute we call it acute asthma but it's not acute chronic disorder of the airways that is complex and characterized by variable and recurring symptoms variable and recurring symptoms air flow obstruction bronchial hyper responsiveness and underlying inflammation where the gina global initiative of asthma says it is a heterogeneous disease characterized by chronic airway inflammation same and it is defined by history of four symptoms classic symptoms who is shortness of breath cough and chest tightness and that vary over time and intensity so this is very important and together with variable expiratory flow limitations so that is the definition what we are so coming back to indian scenario every year we are getting almost 25 lakhs of asthma every year and by two, that is the data from 2016 that <clears throat> the number has been increased by 50% every year so it's very volume is uh, tremendous with uh, the asthma and it's more female are being affected that male it's a disease <coughs> clinical features already been mentioned that the four features one is who is that's who is will be high pitched not the low pitched who is low pitched who is who is means the upper airways 
high pitched as the lower airways because asthma upper airway constriction we call it stridor because more inspiratory than expiratory and lower airway we call it ronchi so cough mostly at the night cough if you somebody is having night cough you must think about whether he is having asthma or not even exercise can cause trigger of the asthma because uh, i know asthma triggering uh, can cause the athlete but at the same time many athletes can have a severe asthma but they are doing with their inhaler so well uh, probably david beckham you must have known david beckham has a very very bad asthma but you know he has done his uh, profession to the peak he has gone to the peak without having anybody knowing that he has got asthma because he used to take the puffs in a uh, no washroom he didn't he was very shy about saying that he has got asthma so this is a, is there but asthma can have a normal life regarding other just i'll touch upon the adult adult we can have occupational asthma you can have aspirin sensitive asthma which is quite common and eosinophilic asthma can be both in children and adult exercise induced asthma that is a problem in having diagnosis of exercise induced asthma because exertional dyspnea can happen happen with any asthma so shaskosto ami ekto tin talay gelei amar shaskosto hocche that is exertional dyspnea that is not exercise induced asthma exercise induced asthma if you do some exercise and after having a lack period that could be 5 minutes that could be 15 minutes that could be half an hour not more than that so if you have tightness of chest you have done the exercise very well you didn't have any feeling and then after that then one must suspect that probably he or she has got exercise induced asthma types of asthma allergic and non allergic has been mixed, uh, mentioned but mostly we do see in our adult is mixed variant both we can find in as allergic and non allergic one thing i would say that is very important that uh, regarding diagnosis episodic symptoms if someone has got a episodic symptoms and all the features are consistent with any say copd or asthma i am not sure but is happening time and again in a different uh, time and uh, 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 durations then probably he or she has got asthma and allergens for triggers that is there he, he has she has mentioned about taking history is very very important because most of my patient if i see i ask four question do you have any pets in your house do you have any birds in your house or do you have uh, do you smoke or do you have any cockroach roaming around in your room so and more 80 to 90 percent you will find that one of them are house dust mite that is very important so i can tell you that if you ask your asthmatic or even copd who has got chronic asthma copd that if they wash their linen their bed sheet and pillow cover every alternate day their requirement of inhalers will come down to at least 50% this is so important and many of my patients know how 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 to be very clean and because that is i i am always asking about that as she was saying that she was asking about technique because <clears throat> in children the technique is very important in adult once i tell them they used to know but other thing i'll just because i i won't go for details of all the disease process that regarding inhalers what he is she was saying that i find many patients after getting better they stop using inhalers and ami boli ki holo apni bondho korechen keno na ami to bhalo achi i am fine why should i use and apni to bhalo dekhchen chashma pore apni chashma ta khule pebe rekhe den na keno baite you can have you to dekhchen bhalo chashma pore na ami to dekhte pabona similarly asthma if you don't use the inhaler you won't be able to 
see the response or feel the response, you will feel after say certain weeks or months. Even Pottek asthmatic a bondo kore, tarpore avar say back to square one, chole jaye say phase, avar tadir say scratch take a suru korta. Because asthma we cannot claim that we can cure, that's true. But I can give you guarantee that if they are using inhalers regularly and religiously for at least three to four years and if they can identify their allergen and can get rid of those allergens, they can be cured. And many of my patients stop using inhalers for years together and they are fine. And so this is very important in asthma, not for COPD. First you need to know whether I have got asthma or I have got a COPD. This is all, sorry about that, I have taken this question here, but it is um, work related asthma is another occupational asthma is very important because Saturday, Sunday if you are on holiday then you won't find anything. Monday te gelen kaje, evening teke you started feeling tightness of your chest. Tuesday mid of your working you are very tight and you can't breathe at the end of the and you can prove that it's occupational. If you do one spirometry before entering into your job and if you do second spirometry after coming out of your job or if you do IG level before entering or after that will stamp the diagnosis because that is important because occupational asthma if you write down that somebody might take the advantage of that from the you know company's head so it's very important if you say occupational you have to prove that before mentioning occupational asthma <coughs> Sorry, I have missed one. This of another child. Another as adult asthma, somebody has raised the question, adult and uh, children. Actually, if I see the adult asthma, if you take history, many of them had childhood asthma. It's a very interesting. Childhood asthma will have spontaneous remission at certain age, teenage or around 20s. And after, again certain age, they will have the symptoms of asthma. And so at least 60 to 70 percent of them are having childhood history of asthma or reactive bronchospasm during viral illness or some kind of wheezing at the childhood. But truly adult asthma is different from childhood asthma. Adult asthma prognostically bad. They are to some extent like COPD. They will never will have waxing and waning of symptoms. Anybody who is having asthma after, after 50 years always think about am I dealing with adult asthma because that might require prolonged treatment, might require you know one or two extra inhaler because asthma can be controlled with just in a steroid inhaler and reliever might help you. But in Adult asthma, we need to give both the beta-2 agonist as, a, as well as anti-muscarinic, both in uh, plus triple therapy and plus steroid. That is important. Another question I used to find that anybody is getting acute exacerbation, suddenly they started using nebulizer. Sir, I to nebulization nebulizer. As if nebulizer will push that uh, you know, fumes into the lung. Absolutely rubbish idea. Nebulization will not give you more than 10% of your fuming inside your alveoli. But if you are using with the spacer, if you are using breath accentuated inhaler, 25% will go into your lung. Say one nebulizer is equivalent to 20 puffs of inhaler. That the volume of drugs you are administering. So even the 10% is going, that comes about to your four or five puffs of inhaler with the spacer. So always I prefer that you must give spacer and uh, inhaler because nebulizer is costly and uh, you, they have to take. Only those who cannot breathe or who cannot inhale or uh, exhale, they are the situation where one has to use the nebulizer. Otherwise, a person who is talking, who is a uh, having good you know b b vital capacity there is no point giving them nebulization another severe asthma because asthma 
we do not want any death from asthma. COPD can have a death, but asthma should not die. That in uh, today, if some asthma patient is dying, it is not fault with the patient, it is fault with the doctor. Because doctor must have missed the you know, um, uh, red signals. Because asthma, when somebody cannot complete his sentence in real breath, that is first thing. Amar Vishun Kosto Hoche. Erokumbabe Kotha Bulchin. That means he is very severe. You must not allow that patient to stay at home because he or she needs constant monitoring. Second is a having a tripod position. Asthma is sitting like this. Because he is using his accessory muscles. He is fatigued. His main diaphragm is fatigued and diaphragm it cannot, you all know that ma ma major respiratory muscle is diaphragm. So it's not working. So you have to have accessory muscles to get that tidal volume. That is one sign. Pulsus paradoxus, where the few doctors are there. If you get a pulsus paradoxus in asthmatic, then that patient should go to I2 or H2. Should not be even in the ward. So these are the few points. And if you have a severe asthma and if you are, are not ventilating, it's a no point using NIV in asthma. Yes, there are very few anecdotal data, but I always tell them that unless you are very good about using NIV and you know when to stop NIV, then you must not use. Because if you intubate and ventilate them, you can, you say in asthma, we call it go in fast and go out fast. If you intubate them, give them rest, the muscle will get rest and will come back to normal situation. You wash out your uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen generation has been done. Next day morning you start winning and win them quickly. In second time, probably you might use the NIV, not the initial phase. Initial phase, if you find that patient needs ventilatory support, straight away intubate in asthma. The other way around in COPD. In COPD, always try NIV. Even if you are very good, even with 7.1 or 6.9 pH, carbon dioxide 120. I, I, if I know my patient, I, I know this patient will be better off with NIV. So I can do that. Very few, you know, differential. I'll just uh, touch upon two things. One is airway, uh, hyperventilation syndrome. You will see few patients, hyperventilation syndrome, they behave like asthma and uh, I have got three patients, all of them are female of certain age, three, 30 to 40. They will, you know, vent, uh, breathing like <sighs> something like that at what she has mentioned that having alkalosis, all the signs even with tetany and they are getting puff. Every you know, uh, minutes using Livolin, and I could remember one patient is using Livolin inhaler every second days, one canister. So it's so badly managed. And uh, what I do, give them a rebreathing mask, or even if you don't have rebreathing mask, at a kagoje thonga chatte futo kore di, ami char kone, diye boli etar modde breath kuru. And within half an hour, his alkalosis will go. He, he, she will feel better. Next, I give them a kagoje thunga, but you have bag eta thakbe, not the inhaler. This is the medicine for you. And believe me, none of them have come back. After second or third uh, outdoor clinic, then they are not coming. They are fine with that. This is one thing sometimes missed with asthma. Another is uh, <coughs> your hyperventilation syndrome and I have, of course I have said, what else? Motor Moti to Sobi Bole Dilam. interesting thing, the asthma niye jodi doubt thakke karo, steroid diye din. Steroid diye jodi respond na kore, tale this is not asthma. Uh, rule of thumb is a steroid always, they should respond. Even oral or inhaled to some extent. 
সো আমাদের অনেক সময় কনফিউশন হয় যে এম আই ডিলিং উইথ অ্যাকোজ আর পিওর অ্যাসমা সো স্টেরয়েড সামটাইমস উই ডু আর এখন তো সবাই স্টেরয়েড পায় সো ভেরি ডিফিকাল্ট টু ডিফারেন্সিয়েট আর স্পাইরোমেট্রি নিয়ে উনি বলেছেন আমি মনে করি যে প্রত্যেক অ্যাজমারি একটা বেস্ট লাইন স্পাইরোমেট্রি থাকা উচিত আর পিক ফ্লো মিটার এটা আমি আরও অ্যাজমাতে স্পাইরোমেট্রি করতে চাই না কেননা স্পাইরোমেট্রির অনেক ফ্যালাসি আছে দেখবেন স্পাইরোমেট্রি কেউ দু মিনিট দু দু সেকেন্ড করেই বন্ধ করে দিয়েছে ইট হ্যাজ টু বি অ্যাটলিস্ট সিক্স সেকেন্ড উইথ গুড ফ্লো আদারওয়াইজ উইল নট গেট দ্য রেজাল্ট অ্যান্ড তারপরেই রেস্ট্রিকটিভ প্যাটার্ন হয়ে গেল তার রেস্ট্রিকটি তার ভাইটাল ক্যাপাসিটি হলো না উঠল না তার রেস্ট্রিকটিভ প্যাটার্ন কোথা থেকে হলো এই অতএব পিক ফ্লো মিটার ইজ ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট ফর অ্যাজমা দেয়ার উইল বি অলওয়েজ এ ডায়োনাল ভেরিয়েশন মর্নিং ইভিনিং নর্মালি আমাদের প্রত্যেকেরই আছে সকালে এবং বিকেলে স্পাই আমরা যদি একটা পিক ফ্লো মিটারে ফু ফু দিই আমাদের লেস দেন ফিফটি ভ্যারিয়েশন হয় কিন্তু ইন অ্যাজমাটিক ইট উইল বি মোর দেন ফিফটি ইভেন হান্ড্রেড টু হান্ড্রেড সো আমার প্র্যাকটিসে আমার যেখানে ডাউট ছিল আমি প্রথম দিকে ইংল্যান্ড থেকে ফিরে স্পিক ফ্লো মিটার পাওয়া যেত না ইভেন আমাদের ফার্মাসিতেও ছিল না আমি ওটা আনিয়েছি কেননা ওটা কিনিয়ে পেশেন্টকে দিয়ে দিতাম যে এটা আপনি সকালে বিকেলে একটা রেকর্ড রাখবেন সাত দিনের কি দশ দিনের এবং তার থেকে ডিফারেন্সিয়েট করে নিতাম যে এর অ্যাজমা আছে এর অ্যাজমা নেই ফ্লো মিটারে আরেকটা ইন্টারেস্টিং এই গ্রাফটা আমি রাখতে বলি কেননা এই গ্রাফ থেকে বোঝা যায় এই ব্লু জোন ইয়োলো জোন রেড জোন নিচেরটা কেউ যদি একবার রেড জোন টাচ করে আমি তাকে ধরে নিয়ে যে বলি আপনি নিশ্চয়ই ইউজ করছেন না এক নম্বর আর নালে ইউজ করলে আপনার জিনিসটা খারাপের দিকে যাচ্ছে ওয়েদার ইজ গোয়িং ইন টু ক্রনিক অ্যাসমা সিওপিডি অর হি নিডস সো দ্যাট দ্যাট পেশেন্ট নিডস ক্লোজ মনিটারিং ক্লোজ ফলো আপ সো ক্লিক ফর মিটার ডায়েরি ইস ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট ফর ব্যাড পেশেন্ট নট ফর এভরি ওয়ান আমরা বেসিক্যালি অ্যাজমা কন্ট্রোল করতে চাই অবজেক্টিভটা হচ্ছে আমাদের দুটো জিনিস যে টু অ্যাচিভ কন্ট্রোল অফ দ্য ডিজিজ অ্যান্ড টু মেনটেন লাইক আমরা যে কোনো যে ট্রিটমেন্টে যেরকম আমরা একটা ক্যান্সার ট্রিটমেন্টও প্রথমে আমরা ইন্ডাকশন করি দেন মেনটেন্যান্স দেন কনসলিডেশন সেরকম অ্যাসমাতেও ইন্ডাকশন মিন্স টু অ্যাচিভমেন্ট অফ দ্য সিমটমস টু গেট রিড অফ দোজ সিমটমস দেন টু মেনটেন দ্যাট অ্যান্ড আফটার দ্যাট হি শুড কাম ব্যাক টু হিজ নর্মাল লাইফ that is the, if he can do his if he is a player he should go back to his prof- if he is a athlete he should go back to his athletic uh, field so then you can call it that my asthma patient is well managed otherwise not and at the same time you need to tell them what are the severe signs and symptoms of asthma what you need to do always you give them a course of steroid they should be if they are the bad asthmatic and uh, uh, always you have to mention the side effect of your medicines that's all